All right, hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. Subscribe it, let's go. So we have a chimney that we're gonna be making in Revit today. What we're gonna do here is let's go to level one and we're gonna go to the architecture tab, go to component, we're gonna go to model uh, in place. From here, let's just do a generic component, generic model, say okay. Okay, and I'm gonna go and make this one just across from the other chimney that I have modeled. And so the first thing we'll do is do extrusion in 3D. Let's just go and see our work plane. So go to show and you should see it pop up on level one where we were working. If you don't see that, you can go and set it. You can say set a work plane and you can just go and pick level one. From there, let's go to level one again and we're going to go and draw out this chimney. So I'm going to go and draw this thing out and Let's just take into account the size right off the bat. So about eight by five is pretty big. So we'll do something like that. And let's go back to 3D. We can see where our sketch is landing. And if we check it off right now, it'll go from my start size up to my finish size. Here you can see the depth. Um, it's okay if you check it off right away. You get these little grip edits. You can drag it up. You can drag it down. So for me, I know I have a one foot uh, depth here to the grade. So I'm going to do an extrusion start of a negative one foot on that. And we'll see this update. And then up here, I'd like to just kind of eyeball it close to something that I'm going to want. And then up here, I can go and make that adjustment. So let's just say 30 feet and apply. All right. Now, before I say finish model, right, I do want to edit the material. And you probably don't have a material assigned to yours yet. I'm just going to go and find brick and with brick, I'm going to do brick common. If you don't see what you want up here in your project, you can expand the material library down here, find what you want, hit the up arrow to load it into your project file and then pick it from up here. Okay. So now we have brick picked out and if we want to see that we can click on our cube and go to shaded and we should see that. Now we need to, we could land here and say, hey, that looks like a chimney for a massing. That's good enough. But let's add some more detail. Let's add a little cutout for the actual flue. So we're going to keep moving here. So before I say finish model, we're going to go back to create. We're going to do another extrusion. Let's do the sill, the cap on top, the chimney crown. We'll do pick a plane or set a plane, pick a plane, pick that top part. Let's see it with show. Let's model this one in 3D instead of a plan view. We'll do pick lines and we'll do an offset. Typical would be two, three inches offset off that. So we'll go and throw those on. Now we have that. Now from this plane, it is starting at zero inches above the plane. If we want it floating above the plane, we would just offset it from the plane at the start. And then I think about six inches should be just fine for the thickness of this. And the material, I like a little brick sand lime, basically like a concrete without the, the stone aggregate. So we're just going to look for concrete. Brick sand lime. Okay. And that's looking pretty good. That's what I have somewhere going on over here. Now let's go and throw in our uh, flute. And so with the flu, you could just Google chimney cross section and you'll find all different kinds of detailings showing you where the smoke shelf is, firebox and your uh, flu going all the way through. Um, so I'm going to do this from a section, uh, a side view. And so we can do this a couple different ways. One is we just model off to the side and offset our depth in. So if we're going to do that, let's just do a quick measurement in plan of how deep this is. So it's eight foot and five foot. So if I want to come in a couple feet on both sides, I can go and make my cut for that fire shelf and flu. We're going to go to create. We're going to do void form, void extrusion. And with void extrusion, now we're going to create some a void form that we can reference to cut geometry later. So I'm going to go and set a work plan by picking just this face right here that has the plane that I can draw the profile of all the intricacies on the inside of this chimney. Then I like to start by just doing pick lines and just grab 
my outside elements here, my border. And then from here, I can go and do pick lines again and offset in and then dimension from these outside lines and then delete these outside lines that we just made at the very end. So it creates a reference point for us for measurements. So I'm going to go and do pick lines. We're going to do offsets. Let's just offset in about a foot. Oh, that's one inch. Let's do one foot, one foot. There we go. Uh, I'm not worried about the extrusion and the start yet. So if I pick here, I'm one foot in, I'm one foot over. And you know, visually, it just doesn't look like enough. I'm going to go one foot up from the bottom line. I know I want that. That's where my finished floor is at. I'm going to do TR to trim. I'm just going to trim those together. I'm going to trim this to here, this to here. Okay. So here's what I was talking about with the reference to these outside lines. If I click on this line here, now I have the ability to grab onto it and reference it. So let's just say I wanted to go two feet in. And from over here, I'm going to go two feet in. And remember, it's the blue line, the line that you select is the one that moves when you dimension. So now that's a pretty skinny uh, flu. So I might want to be doing something more similar to like 1.5 feet or one foot six inches. And so I'll do the same down here, 1.5 feet or one foot six. That looks about right to me. Now, I don't need these outside lines anymore. And it's best to overextend your cut. If you want to go all the way through an object, just overextend it. That way uh, Revit doesn't have to determine like, is this plane being cut or not? It doesn't like two things at the same plane sometimes. So it's good to do that. Then I'm going to hit tab and select the outside line and delete. Um, if you hover on something and hit tab, you do a chain select. All right. So now that I have this, I want to determine from this plane how far back I want to go to start the cut and where I want to end. Well, let's start with that. So I'll finish that off. That actually looks OK to me visually. If it doesn't cut, this ends up not cutting. Then you can just go and do the cut geometry and you would pick the void form and then you would pick the two items that you want it to cut. So if it ever doesn't cut what you want it to cut, you can just go and manually do cut geometry, pick the void form first, pick the items to cut with the void form after. All right, let's go and modify this thing because I didn't even do that. So I'm going to edit the extrusion on this and now let's modify this. So that way we have the actual profile coming through our um, our chimney for the firebox as well as the smoke shelf going up to the flue. So I'm going to do pick lines again. I'm going to pick this outside edge and then I'm going to do TR to trim. I'm going to trim this line over to that. Now this is going to become the opening for our firebox. I do need to split it. So I'm going to split it. I'm going to split it somewhere down here. Seven feet tall seems kind of large. So I'm going to go and bring that down to about the opening I want my firebox to be. So let's just say five is pretty big. Let's go to like three foot six. And then from here, we're going to draw a line kind of coming up and in. And that's going to represent the smoke chamber, like diagonal area. And then there needs to be a smoke shelf. And so I'm going to go and bring in a little smoke shelf. And I'm going to come down and down. And now let's do TR to trim because this is looking a little messy. We'll trim that to that. And then we want to trim this to this and this to this. And let's delete that. OK, now this is looking good. Now, the only other thing is we might want to just extend our cut beyond the face of the brick. And then check this off. All right, so it's hard to see what I've done, but if we go into level one and let's finish the model for a second and I'll delete this section out so we can see how I make that view section. And let's just go and draw a section through, right click, go to view. All right, here's our section for our chimney. And we can see that there's some things I need to edit in terms of like the wall. So that way there's not a wall going through there and the roof and the floors. And we'll do that in just a moment. Um, but that's pretty much how I get the profile. If I want to make a clay tile portion on top, it would be the same thing. I'll just go and create an extrusion. 
think you kind of get the point on that. So I won't have to model that for you. But let's go and do the cuts through everything. In architecture, we can go to our uh, openings, so vertical opening, and we want to cut our roof. We'll do pick lines and we'll go and pick the lines that would go and intersect that object. Don't think I have to close that. I do have to close it. So I'm just going to go and snap that off. And so now we have that cut. Let's go and look at our section. And you can see that that's been cut. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a shaft for the floor. And then the wall will just have to split it and bump it into it. Let's go and in the section view, architecture, we're going to do a shaft opening. And we'll draw it in level one. And for our shaft opening, we are just going to do pick lines, hover on the one, hit tab. If it'll do a chain select. If not, I'm just going to grab it. Now, when I go and click these, I could have been locking them to it. So if I ever change the location of the fireplace, then my shaft will cut with it. So actually, I'm going to go and do that. Control Z to just undo those. Pick line, pick it, lock it, pick it, lock it, pick it, lock it, pick it, lock it. Okay. Now from here, it's going to be doing a level one unconnected height of 20. We can just go and send that to the roof. And then we can say a top offset, offset from the roof, just like another, I don't know, five feet should be just fine. But let's just be aggressive and say 10. And then if we check that off in 3D, then section, now our floors have been cut back. Now what is this? This is our wall. So now we just need to edit that wall. So if we go to level one, we're going to go and just do a split face. Uh, I'm not split face, uh, just a split, split element. We could do with gap. Um, and basically doing with gap would work pretty well as like a one operation for this uh, chimney. But we could also just do the regular split and then delete out the other side. So let's do a split and grab that. Grab that, detach, escape, click on that, delete it. Now we do the align tool. We'll align this with this, lock it. We'll align this with this and lock it. So now that we have that, we should be able to move this component around and the walls cut and the uh, everything cuts with it. So that should be pretty good. So now we have this. This fireplace, all good here. Uh, the only thing here that I'm noticing is this is not, is not moving with this here. We go back to, let's just say 3D, edit sketch, and let's lock and align these. So if I use the align tool, it will give me the opportunity to lock that. And let's do that here. You pick the item you want to you wanna keep first. And then you pick the other item to lock. So the align tool, you pick what you like first, and then you pick what you want to lock to it second. All right, then we go back here, check that off. All right, cool. Now if I go and move this around anywhere, you'll see that it'll slide and everything should cut with it, which is nice. Back to section, we're looking good. All right, don't forget to save, subscribe, like it, and we'll see you next time.